but they're very well coordinated. It is, it is nice to see there again, another vehicle just coming in. You might hear them just passing by and there. All the little lions stopping to have a look. Oh, here's our curious friend. You're looking up at that tree as if we were a leopard and you were going to climb it. Yes. Stretch up for us. You don't quite know what to do. It doesn't look like it really knows. It's just seen the others go up to the tree and stretch up, but hasn't quite worked out that you must grip your claws into the bark and then pull down. You'll get there. You can't know everything at once. Just take life easy, little one. Beautiful. Look how stocky they are, though. The lions are so muscly here. And I suppose they do have to travel far distances. We see them moving. Um, masses, massive... Um, I mean, massive miles in just a short space of time. It really amazes me how all these animals are designed for traveling far distances. Oh, that's beautiful now with that light. Look at that. And, of course, the older cubs playing. All the Bellinites trees. It's a very, very pretty setting out here this evening. Uh, the Ngama Pride have definitely got one of the most stunning spots here in the Mara Triangle. I could see why they wouldn't want to... Let this go. They've got a lugger that's permanently, most of the time it's filled with water. At least some parts have got water. And they've got from short grass to tall grass to lots of trees that will cast beautiful shadows to sleep under. And then there's abundance of food, too, and the escarpment. It's quite nice. All the birds also just starting to give their last call now. I think we could get a quite a nice dawn chorus. Not dawn, my goodness. <laughs> Tusk chorus. <laughs> Wrong time of the day, Taylor. Right, speaking of birding, uh, it seems as though Tristan is not faring well with the cats in Juma. However, he's managed to find a couple of feathery friends. Well, we are. We've had such a cool sighting of these magpie strikes. Unfortunately, most of them have now flown off, but they were busy fighting with one another down on the ground. And so there was two of them on the ground fighting, and then another three that were around. And you can see this one is still displaying. It's still got its wings out, displaying at the others, and there's a number of them. And I think they're in a mating display at the moment, and that's why there's a lot of this calling and wings fluttering. It's very cool to see. So... It's now flown away, unfortunately, and we're going to carry on. But we're just in the area where we had these cheetah this morning. No sign of them that I can see just yet. Um, there was a track that looked like they... Oh, come on, Rusty. Get into reverse. It was a track that looked like they came back onto the road after we left them. But I can't find any further sign of them going anywhere. Now, just to my right here, while I was looking around, I've just spotted a dwarf mongoose poking its head out of... A little termite mound hole but it's gone back inside so if we're just patient hopefully a little head will pop out somewhere in that general vicinity they went scuttling in there just now when we came up and so I think there should be one that should show itself at some point although sometimes they can be a little bit shy and sometimes you'll find that they just kind of keep themselves in there and they don't actually show but that's the hole that they went in come on no no apparently not they also have a number of different exits, so there might be a different sort of termite mound hole somewhere along this general vicinity where they've come out and exited, and so we might be just wasting our time sitting and watching. But I'm driving this road very carefully because I'm trying to check as much as I can for these cheetah and to see where they are. And VM and I were actually talking about it. We, we had a little look at the tracks where they crossed out this morning. And their tracks are much larger than you kind of give them credit for. They they have a very big track in comparison to what we kind of think. It, and you could easily mistake it for in soft sand for a male leopard because it kind of gets quite a big appearance to it. But it's, once you look at it closely, then you see that it's a lot narrower than what you would expect. And so, but it doesn't seem like anything's crossed back. It just looked like one came onto the road and then there so I think this is where they crossed in VM isn't it? The leopard track. Well that's pretty cool. I won't say no to that either. On the left going which way VM? Going west. So going the other way. Let's have a look. 
Is it not for those cheetah? Leopard. Okay, well, leopard going west is a problem because we haven't picked up any tracks that are nice and fresh. So it must have carried on down the road. Maybe it's not too fresh. I know that somebody heard a leopard calling last night um, on the dam cam, but I believe there was a leopard seen on Torchwood early this morning. So I wonder if it's maybe the same individual. Hmm. I don't think these cheats have come back, unfortunately. I was really hoping that they were going to come back and I'd find them at Buffalzook Dam having a rest. But it seems as though I think they, unfortunately, have turned back north. Maybe it was just a little bit too much too soon for them in terms of the vehicles and the movement and everything. And they'll eventually work it out and get through and maybe settle. But it's still... It, It's still one of those amazing things and so we're just gonna kind of drive along and hope maybe we get lucky and we see something. Now Kristen, you say it sounds like you really need to re-watch the Sunrise Safari. Well, indeed, it, it, it's special because I believe that the last time we saw a cheetah on Juma itself, and I'm not talking about when we were on Cheetah Plains and we were seeing the two brothers there, but the last time we saw cheetah on Juma itself was in June of 2015. So that just gives you an idea of how uncommon this is to see it's a very special thing and to see four cheetah together is always very special I mean obviously even in the Mara the five musketeers but outside of them there's not too many other groups that are, are bigger than in three or two or three in individuals and so it's a special thing to see four cheetah and it was just amazing because it's just the most unexpected animal to have especially where we were I mean we were in the it's a dense area this this northern sector is not exactly open and so it's it was a strange place to see them I would have thought they might have gone down cheetah cut line or something like that but anyway it was uh, it was really quite an amazing thing and I was super excited it's still kind of one of those pinch me things where you've got to kind of sit and pinch yourself and remember that it actually did happen but straight up ahead of us which unfortunately is not a cheetah I was hoping that we could see a cheetah against that dark background but isn't that Impala look beautiful against the dark sort of stormy clouds in the background and that beautiful afternoon light and of course now it's going to cross off as I say that but it was just nice to see it as it was still on the road JC, you're saying that you know you thought cheetah liked more open areas, and why would they venture into somewhere like Juma that is so wooded? Well, JC, the reason, well, the thing is, is that these guys have got to try and find open areas out here. It's not like the Mara where everything is open. The the Kruger Park system, while there are areas that are are semi-open and and there's still some vegetation, and so they've got to cross thicket areas in order to find open spaces in order to then be able to hunt and move around and all of those kind of things. Now north of us on Buffalo's Hook there are a lot of nice open places and really special specialized places for cheetah and they might just be pushing around just to see what else there is. They might be looking for food, it could be water availability that they're trying to find. You never know what the situation is. There also could be a lot of pressure maybe from a new coalition of cheetahs that are where this female comes from or it could be another female cheetah that pushing her and that's why she's moving in this direction we don't know there are all these sort of factors and, and, and things surrounding her and why she's moving this way but it's good for us at the end of the day if she keeps pushing and she's just got to try and get past a little bit further west and try and come down Gari cut line because if she comes down Gari cut line she'll be able to see um, quarantine from there and, and that might drive her to come a little bit closer and to push into those areas and so hopefully at some point maybe she does move into this area and maybe we get lucky and we find her again it's I, I don't think it'll be the last time that she'll come here I'm pretty sure that if she's come here twice in the last sort of two months uh, granted we only found her for the first time today but they did cross in here a while ago we had their tracks coming in just right here actually and crossing over so it seems as though they have moved into this area before they have se spent some time here and so you never know maybe we're going to get a situation where she's going to come again and again and eventually it will become a lot more commonplace and it's much like what happened in Buffalo she arrived out of nowhere with these three little ones and she's kind of in and out a lot but she's spending more and more time on Buffalo itself and so who knows maybe 
maybe she's bringing the young ones down here to kind of push them out and to show them an area that they can potentially start out life in as young individuals. It's going to be interesting to see. Now this morning I got so excited while we were seeing them that I didn't actually pay attention as to whether they're male or female. I know that one is definitely a male. I'm not sure what the rest is. Two males, yeah, and I don't know what the other one is. So Vian says two, and he's not sure about the other one. So I don't know if anybody else got screenshots of the back ends of all three that we can determine whether there's a female in there. But it'll be nice if it's three males, because then potentially we might have a coalition that will move around in this general vicinity, which will be super cool. Now, there's one other thing that's an update from our conversation earlier about today. VM was telling me that he, in his opportunism and grabbing of various toiletry items that were being thrown away, he came across a, was it a body wash, VM? Body wash. And, and now, when two fellas are together, it's, it's very, you know, you can't really comment on the smell of another man because otherwise it can be construed as many different things. And I, I've noticed this pungent waft of vanilla cake that is floating around and VM then let out a little secret that one of these body washes that he has got now and has acquired smells of a freshly baked vanilla cake warm vanilla cake with a creamy topping apparently very creamy smell apparently so VM smells like a vanilla cake right now and we'll see if that's good for animals or not but while we dwell on that thought and process the fact that he's a vanilla cake smelling human on the back of the vehicle operating a camera let's go across to Brent <laughs> and I think Brenty I don't know what he's actually got because I was too busy thinking about VM story but I'm sure it's something interesting but VM, the giraffe don't smell like vanilla body wash, but they've definitely spotted something. So we've rushed across here. They're all staring in the direction. So we're going to go see what's around the corner. I'm hoping it is a spotted cat. One of the two spotted cats that we get here at Utah Leopard, or even a serval, you never know. That is absolutely gorgeous. But there's a massive group of giraffes, and they're all staring in one spot, which generally means there is a predator around. Now, back to VM and the vanilla body wash. I think he probably eats it rather than washes himself with it. Now, Vim and I, of course, spent a lot of time together when he was up here. It is a lion. Oh, dear, it's not a spotted cat. Oh, apparently my voice is deeper than normal. Is it even deeper now? We do apologize. We are having a little bit of a, a, a tick. Okay, that's the tech, tech problem. But there we go. The giraffe were staring at something. It is a single lioness. I was really hoping in this area it might be a spotted cat. And um, the guy who noticed all the giraffe staring and actually told me about it was um, my friend in front of me from Kitchwe. Um I was going the other way. He's like, I just saw a giraffe looking in one spot. There must be something there. And there she is. Hello, good looking. Now, which pride do you belong to? Or have you come across from the other side of the river? <laughs> So it could be, now we saw how many, we saw four lionesses, so all, 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 all those counted for. Angamas, I'm not sure how many Angamas are with Taylor, but it could also be one of the marsh breakaways um, from the other side of the river. We were about opposite Musia, no, actually just below Musiara Marsh, so opposite Governor's main camp at the moment. And just below there, of course, is the Mara River Pride, which is a very big pride of lions, but there's just one lioness so far here. A gorgeous light just breaking through the clouds. <laughs> so while we sit with our smelly lion, let's go across back to Juma to the fresh smell of vanilla with VM and Tristan. Well, exactly, Brent. It's nice to have him al along for the ride because if we had a stinky lion anywhere on our sort of trip, we can then just 
kind of smell vehement and it will all be fine. Now, you'll have a look and talking about lions, it seems as though there is tracks for a lion here and it, it has been tracked by somebody because I can see their footprints. But you see over there is a really large, big male lion paw print. And so one of our big Birmingham boys has obviously walked here in the last couple of days but I actually just want to double check this track because even though I can see someone walked somewhere close by here and it looks like they followed this I'm pretty sure that these tracks are a little bit fresher than they actually look and I wonder if maybe somebody followed these in the last few days or if they're old and, and the easiest way to test this is because we've had a situation where it's rained and it was kind of quite damp yesterday if we touch the track and I was talking about this earlier it should be fairly soft if it's quite fresh it, if it's from last night it will be a, a fairly soft freshish track if it is from before that then the edges will be quite hard and now if I touch this I am making a dent but the edge is fairly actually quite rigid compared to what it should be it's a lot more rigid than I thought and it's quite crumbly but if you had a track that was very very fresh so let's say I made a track you can see if I had to touch there would be no sort of resistance it would just kind of fall away straight away and it wouldn't be as crumbly and as kind of thick and cakey as we would have expected and this line track then means that it was during that rain time the other thing is is if we have a look here on this side of the line track if I circle there the line track is based here there is a hyena track that is over the top of the toes of this line so this line track must have been from yesterday and is probably the two Birmingham one of the two Birmingham males that's on that buffalo kill or just north of our cut line on Buffalo's hook so not fresh tracks and not tracks that we're going to follow or look for because well we know exactly where he's probably ended up and like I said there's somebody that's already walked and checked those tracks and looked at those tracks right Now, I'm in hearing an interesting update on the radio. Interesting. Sounds like there might be a leopard somewhere on Gauri Main, so I'm going to try and just find out what's going on there. Maybe there is a leopard somewhere that side and I don't know I'm just trying to listen carefully as to what they're saying but it sounds like somewhere close to Cheetah Plains driveway which of course east of that we can't go and west of that we can because it's with Chitwa. Now I'm just listening. Sounds like Kuchava that's that side. I'm going to try and work out exactly what's going on just now. We're still very far from that area so we'll try and head in that direction and see what's going on. So while I head in that direction I believe Brent has got a sunset and a giraffe so let's quickly jump across to him. Okay, so the lioness, a, a warthog has started running towards her. The warthog hasn't spotted her in the long grass, or the longish grass. And you can see how she's crouching right down. Where's that piggy gone? It was getting, there, there's the piggy. So he's just ambling home. Okay, Ferg, I'm gonna try to get us a bit closer. So we came to actually get a giraffe sunset, and as I turned around, I saw that the, the lion was, definitely changing her behavior. Now I've lost sight of the pig. He might have gone down a hole already, but she's still stalking. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go past her. Okay, I've got the pig. I'm just gonna go past quickly. I think the pig's managed to possibly put enough ground between him and the lion while well, she's jogging now the pig still hasn't seen her so she's trying to get within striking distance there we go the pig must have stopped she's getting very close now there are a lot of other animals around they might give away her presence I think the pig might make it home before she gets there The 
pig disappeared into the long grass there. Obviously, she might still be able to see it. But I think that piggy might have found a hole. She probably has a better view from where she is at the moment. And there are a lot of warthog holes in this area. Um, made by Art Fox originally. Oh, there's the pig. He's he's still running, jogging in front of her. But not because of her, just because he's on the move. You see the piggy, a little bit to the right. Um, a little bit more past, just if you keep going, you'll see an impala. And just past the impala, there we go, there's the pig. See, not a very scared run, just heading home run. I think that piggy's going to make good its escape. And she wasn't quite quick enough. Okay, we're going to go a little bit closer again. I think she wasn't quite quick enough. And up disappearing. And it looks like she's given up. Okay, so you can see she's given up now. Whoopsie. So, and Fergus apologizing. Don't worry, as soon as we're off air, I'll hit him with a stick. So it looks like she just wasn't quick enough. And you can hear them piling up. You've been spotted, lady. Staring forlornly to where the pig disappeared. So this area is called Makoporini, or the graveyard. And uh, it's due to all the art fog burrows. So in the old days, this was an off-roading area. It's not an off-roading area anymore. And uh, what happened is that it's, it was called a car graveyard. Apparently, at some stage, you could have three or four cars all stuck or broken down here. Oh, dear, Lady Lion. That was unlucky. I thought you were going to get some bacon for dinner. Well, actually, not some bacon, the whole roast. Impala snorting. <laughs> Richie says at least the piggy is safe. Well, for today. Tomorrow is another day out on the African plains. And uh, piggies are quite, quite, quite high up the lion's favorite food list. Here's some baboons as well. Wow. Wow. In the distance. Don't think they've seen the lioness yet. Just talking. Getting ready for bed. Well, I think we're going to try head back and get that giraffe sunset we were after before the lioness took off after the, the piggy. I think we might be a bit late. Ferg, what do you think? Maybe, maybe. Uh, Ferg says it's delightful. So let's try get some giraffe with this incredible sky behind them. She doesn't look too hungry, that lioness, so maybe she'll hunt again a little bit later. Maybe she's going to go look for the rest of the pride. Uh, we had that lovely big group of giraffe, and let's see if we can find some and put them in front of that sky. They've all wandered around the corner.
Now, giraffes just get taller, so your head's uh, silhouetted above the... No. Yes. Yes. As Ferg says, we might have to put them on a high chair to get their heads into the light. Uh, they're all moving away from that area of the lioness. There they go. Towards the setting sun. Beautiful, beautiful. It got a little bit dark, but uh, we did have to see what the lion was going to get up to. Ferg's going to do some camera magic. There we go. Nice camera magic, Ferg. What a wonderful, quintessential Mara scene. The Maasai giraffe, uh, the setting sun, the Ololo escarpment in the background. Very peaceful at the moment. Just one Egyptian goose breaking the tranquility in the distance. One piece of roof ruining this Ferg's, Ferg's shot. Ah, well, you've gone from a very tall animal beneath the setting sun now to a shorter, smellier animal beneath the setting sun. This is the most incredible setting. I have seen every day I come out in the bush and, and I, I say this often but it, it, this is genuine well, they, it's genuine all the time but you know I keep saying to myself I can't get any better I cannot have a more beautiful sunset but it should be accompanied not only by the beautiful colors in the sky and I thought that we weren't going to get much at all to of course pride of lions and little ones that are very excited about life at the moment which is so cool and they haven't stopped stalking one another they've now moved around quite a bit there's a couple in front that are still frolicking about which is really really nice and we had some black and white cask hornbills fly over the top of us and then we had the crowned cranes flying off into the distance the guinea fowl haven't stopped chattering and then you know who's actually been particularly quiet this afternoon? There's a rufous-snaped lark, which is unusual because they're very chatty out here. Uh, the lions haven't made too much noise, though. A little bit of growling and contact calling here and there, uh, but nothing else just yet. This is proving to be a really, really beautiful afternoon. I didn't think we'd be with these lions for such a long time. And there's also some elephants that you can see just, be <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> just behind the... Uh, and the lions as well. I'm not taking any notice of them, but they're quite a, a fair away, a fair way away. That's what I wanted to say. I was going to say, they don't stop here. They've just got endless amounts of energy when they're this age, but I suppose then they crash pretty quickly too. They're going to use all their energy until mom wakes up and says, right, come on, we're going to go walk, we're going to go walk five miles now. And then they'll probably start to panic a little bit and, and, and hope that they didn't use all their energy. Looks like they're having a little drink of water. There must be a bit of a puddle. Doesn't surprise me. After playing so hard, it's important to hydrate. A lot of these little ones won't be drinking as much water as an adult lion would because they're getting it from mom's milk. They'll be suckling still too. Craig, are you enjoying the sighting? It's mm, nice. When Craig says something's pretty cool, then you know. It's hard to please, Craig. Oh, careful, you've got someone sneaking up behind you. We. Oui. <laughs> well, hello, Paula. Paula, thank you for your question and all your questions today. It's been great. You're wondering if the adults will take turns sleeping to keep an eye out for predators. No, not at all. Um, they'll all just rest, even when a lion is sleeping, barring the odd occasion that you hear them snore. Uh, most of the time... They've still got their ears open and they're listening for anything that may be trying to creep up to, up to them. I mean, I don't know how many animals would be brave enough to creep up to a big pride of lions like this. Perhaps elephants. I heard a buffalo. I think a hippo might come charging through here too. 
and so it's, but they'll just they'll just sort of rest they won't uh, they won't worry about the little ones at all and one of the younger males came right up to the cart it was quite interesting he he walked up maybe about six foot away if even that maybe a little bit closer and he was staring straight into the car he wasn't looking at any one of us he was focused on the camera which is quite funny. He, obviously, it stands up on a bit of a pedestal, and uh, he can see that quite clearly. This is interesting. I then snapped my fingers at him, though, and then he realized what he was doing, and then he walked away. And it's good to just keep them aware that they can't come right up to, you know, right up to the cars and, and take a look or touch the vehicle. So here's one of the naughty boys now, as we speak of him. He appears. No, not coming over. I think he's learnt his lesson now. They do it every single time we come around. I don't know why they always stalk my car. I didn't see them doing it to anybody else. And I'm not doing anything to get their attention. I can promise you that. Now, Canis, you're wondering if I thought that the the big group of cubs that we've got here would try and stalk and attack something that came wandering through. Um... Probably they would try. Whether they would try and get close to it, I'm not so sure. That they're, ooh, they're a little bit stupid, if you will, at this age in terms of they think they're a lot bigger and stronger than what they actually are. They think they're fully grown male lions now at this age. That's why I say um, they're a bit stupid. I don't mean it in a bad way, though. Lions are most certainly, I don't think they're un unintelligent creatures. They have to work out how to hunt and bring animals down. It takes a bit of skill. And um, so, yes, they would. You know, for, you know what actually happened? Did you remember I just told you about the black and white cast cornbills that flew overhead? They were flying quite low, uh, lower than the tops of the Balanites trees. And as they were flying, uh, the sort of wind between their feathers was making a noise and it caught their attention and all the lions were chasing after them. I mean, not that they can leap six meters into the air. There's absolutely no way they could do that, but they tried their best uh, to, to go for them. Are you coming over to say hello? Yes, you are. See how I just took a little step off to the side, though? Just keeping, keeping his distance. And I like that. That's good. Uh, I want them to know that they can approach the vehicles. See how I'm looking in? Very curious. This is not one of the older ones, but they mustn't. They mustn't. Oh, oh, does that. <laughs> there are termites there, I think. Are they, are they active? No, they're, an... oh, they're, they're ants. Oh, they're the safari ants, the siafu ants. Okay, so that little lion, and I think obviously got a nip on the nose. Didn't quite realize where it was going. So they're just moving now. They're probably moving their colony. I better go quickly. Lots of things that would like to eat you at night. But what I was saying is that they have to understand that they cannot touch the vehicles, that they cannot, we are not a play toy. We need to respect them because it's all cute and it's fun while they're young. <laughs> that poor came out of nowhere. But when they get older and they start doing things like that, it's a little bit more intimidating, isn't it? Eee, there we go. That was a big jump. So starting to show some more interest in the trees now. I oh, would love to see if these little ones are able to shimmy up. They were climbing the trees the other day. Um, and I think that they would love marulas. Imagine this pride of lions out on qu the qu plains of quarantine just behind the DRC in South Africa. Uh, imagine how cool that would be to see them climbing up all of those massive fallen marulas that we've often had Hosanna and Shongile up. And when Karula was still around, she used to love that area too. And we had some magnificent sightings of her and her youngsters up top there. You guys would have an absolute ball. Yes, I'm watching you. He's creeping up to the car. He's maybe about four or five meters away. I mean, here, look how close I, so close I could almost touch him. Not really. No, that's a bit deceiving the way the camera is angled. Yes, boy, listening to us. I'd love to know what my voice sounds like to a lion, what they think we're saying. Oh, here we go. I'm just going to watch him, so I'm going to shuffle slightly. Because I do want to walk. See, he tries to go to the back of the car. He, I think he knows that we can't see back there. Hey, uh-uh. Don't do anything silly. Just watching him. Did you see? He doesn't come, doesn't come up to the driver's door. Well, I say that. Oh, got, got the ants. 
Yes, that's not nice. Look at them. Not even a big, strong lion wants to have anything to do with the the Siafu answer so just goes to show. So what I was saying is that it's amazing how he, he doesn't quite come right up to the car. Well, he doesn't come here. He goes to the back. So I don't know what's drawing him. I don't know if it's maybe the aerial or the antenna that's standing up that he also sees. It's also bright white. So it's an, it's a very obvious thing to see for a lion to see that coloration. Um, but he doesn't come around here. Mm, sneaky, very sneaky animals, aren't they? Well, they're still playing. Where is everybody? So I also have to keep making sure that no one is sneaking up around the car. So if you do see the camera moving slightly, I apologize. It is me just shuffling about. Making sure I've got eyes on all these lions. Look how it just disappears behind that trunk of the tree. Oh, hi, Bacon. You say that you absolutely love their spotty legs. Oh, it's very precious. And, and it's nice to see when they're all huddled up together, all the little spots that they have on them. They almost look... You know, I, I'm wondering... No, I don't know. My, sorry, my mind wandered there for a second. I think we're going to have another big leap here. Oh, no. I love how the little one just jumps in and says, Yes, I did that. I took you to the ground. That was all me. I'm so strong. No, you're not. You might have sharp claws and teeth, but you are not strong just yet. You've still got a lot of training to go. You're going to hit the gym, little one. If you want to be big and strong, like your big brother over there. And the lionesses still haven't woken up. They're still completely flat. But they are... Oh, no, I've said that. And then I've just seen a lioness actually stand up on the right-hand side now. Well, that's good. That's good news for us. No. And back down again. On top of the other one. Well, that's a good way to wake up another lion. <laughs> not as if that's another adult. No, it looks like a youngster, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> No, we haven't seen any male lions today. Well, not in this car, but um, I said Byron, but Brent has. He's seen the Triangle Boys, and uh, we saw them yesterday and the day before that as well. And a, a question about male lions from Riti, and, and it was, why does it seem as though the females do more of the hunting than the males? Well, the reason for that is it's not because they're lazy and it's not because they aren't capable. I mean, a fully grown male lion, and I talk about the Charleston males often in the Sabi San, uh, one of the Charleston males, uh, the male, that has the tooth hanging, his canine dangling from the side of his mouth. He brought down a buffalo, fully grown buffalo bull, all on his own. It was during the drought, so this male was obviously weakened. However, that is still a big animal, and for one lion to bring it down on his own, that's it's unbelievable. I mean, two big male lions would be able to take down a buffalo bull. Uh, it would be a tough fight, but where was I going with this now? What was the question again? Oh, the... the Ooh, a butterfly syndrome. It just kicked in so hard there. Okay, so so the reason why the females hunt more is that they are, they're obviously just a bit more streamlined and also they don't have a big mane. And in areas where you've just got a grassland and, and you can imagine when the grass is particularly short, especially if you're hunting during the day, it becomes quite difficult to try and stay hidden. Uh, the girls seem to be able to flatten themselves right down to the ground uh, a lot better. But male lions are so important during a hunt um, because... Obviously, the prey that they're going after is much larger than them for both males and females. And when you're chasing after an animal, the thing you want to do is try and get it to the ground. Cheetah use the ankle tap technique, which works very well for them. and sends their prey tumbling at a speed, and then they'll go through and try and suffocate it that way. Whereas lion, yes, it's running, but it needs to try and knock its prey off its foot. An ankle tap is not quite going to work. So by running and leaping onto an animal and then trying to pull them down to the ground... Uh, that that is probably the, the best opportunity and a male lion will do that best in fact because of his sheer size he's a lot bigger than the girls and would be able to knock an animal off its feet much easier so they're important um, but here yeah, the male lions will probably hunt just as much as the females remember those boys go off on territorial patrols on, on a regular basis almost every single day depending if they're mating with females or not and if they aren't finding the prides or every time they find the prides and they, the, the females don't have a kill well, they'll just go in and, and um, take what they can. Uh, then they've got to hunt for themselves. And they'll do so. They will definitely do so. Uh, the Charleston males were incredible with that. They were always hunting on their own. They never relied on the Southern Pride to catch them dinner. But perhaps that's because 
They were young boys that had been roaming around and had to hunt for themselves, and they haven't had the luxury of being in a pride. Maybe that changes as they get older. They take advantage of the girls, but both male and female are equally good hunters. Tristan, however, is doing a little bit of tracking just before the sun sets. I hope he finds what he's looking for. We found tracks for what looks like a young male leopard walking along Mumba Road down towards Spaghetti Junction and into the Mulawati, which is a favorite walking route of Tumba. So I'm just really scratching now to try and see where these tracks go. Nothing seems to come out on this side, but I'm going to just go along Twin Dams a little bit and then turn back onto Mumba and northwards again. There's a few. Um, elephant tracks around as well so I don't know tough to say though it's difficult the, the tracks feel really soft and powdery and not at all crispy like I was talking about earlier with the male lion track they seem as though they are fairly fresh tracks and they almost were glistening in the Sun when we first found them so I think this individual is somewhere here it's after the rain for sure whether or not these tracks are from right now or if they are from earlier today or last night is anyone's guess now there's two grey go away birds that I thought were starting to talk but they actually are fairly quiet they're just sitting up in the tree itself just kind of watching and they when they're quiet then you know not much is going on around them they funny a bird though because once they see danger they'll make a bit of a noise for a while and once danger passes they fairly quickly they keep quiet again and it could be that they just oh a little kiss hello I think it's more a situation where it's a young one trying to feed from the adult it's still nice to see. Hello guys. Start calling so we can find a leopard. I'm sure there's a leopard here somewhere. Now earlier when we were with us you were, I was trying to get onto the radio to figure out what was going on with Kuchava but she's crossed into Torchwood and so there's no view for us and it was further east of Cheetah Plains driveway unfortunately so we wouldn't have been able to see her anyway but she's going northeast or northwest should I say in in Torchwood itself so maybe she'll come towards Gari Cutline I'm not hundred percent sure but it just seems as though she's gonna hang around that particular section Smithy you asking if leopards roar well not so much that they roar they have a I mean I suppose roar is the right word but they saw is, is the word that we use for it but they are in the category of roaring cats if you want to call it that and so they are able to produce a very loud sound much like a roar but they don't roar like lions it's not the same kind of sound it's a it's still very deep very sort of rough sound but it doesn't sound at all like what you would hear from a male lion now just trying to focus quite heavily on the tracks that we're on because this morning I drove here and checked in this area and so if the tracks are on top of me from this morning then we know that these are fairly good fairly fresh no 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 so nothing that I can see so far but we'll just have to keep looking and checking it's unfortunately we're running out of light a little bit which makes life a little harder in order to find this animal but we're gonna try our very very best and just try and see if we can find a track somewhere here again the last track that I saw was just to our north here as we were crossing the Mulawati it's the last track that I had so I'm gonna just try and check there again and go back and just have a little look and check properly oh no don't fly so there was a brown hooded kingfisher there which has just flown it's landed in front of us actually so I can stop a little bit ahead see if it will stay there. VM can you see it still? It's just on the lowest branches of this tree in front. So that one, yep. If you just look down, there it is. So there's our brown hooded kingfisher that's sitting underneath all the greenery and you can see it's got that little bit of blue on the wing, not quite as much as what you'd see from a woodland. Also the woodland has the black and red beak, not just the red of this beak and then also this has got that brownish colorated head so quite an easy bird to identify and these guys are a lot in this section we see them often in the Mulawati area flying from tree to tree to tree and unfortunately for them their time to shine is about to be kind of 
blunted and, and put out so to speak because woodland kingfishers are about to arrive on mass and when they do unfortunately the brown hooded kingfishers just have to take a back seat they get drowned out by the woodlands and the woodlands being a bigger bulkier bird often will push them away and just find their own place to kind of take over and the brown hooded have to just sit in hiding and wait it also sounds like a few green pigeons calling from around us so I'm just checking there it is right there on top it's a beautiful bird it's actually right in the sunlight at the moment so it looks absolutely spectacular so there's the greenness of the green pigeon and you can see it's got that little bit of yellow in the beak as well red feet and these birds are very pretty as far as pigeons go they are the sort of supermodels of the pigeon race and they've got a lot more color than what some of the other birds do that's for sure you find them again same like the brown hooded kingfisher they love these drainage sections and the reason why is there's a number of trees is its call and this, there's a number of trees that are fruiting in this area and so they're going to feed off all kinds of different trees like that so jackalberries the spike thorns um, quarries these baboon grapes that we saw i would imagine they would go after that and off it goes it's quite strange to see it by itself generally you see them together and kind of in a grouping Kristen, you're saying we haven't seen any night jars lately. Are they migratory? Kristen, no. So they're not migratory. It's just that we, unfortunately, at the moment, are finishing drive too early for night jars. We finish and it's not really dark at the moment. And that means that we, unfortunately, don't see them. They only come out at night. And so we're missing the night jars by about 15 minutes or 10 minutes or so. So once we change our times again, because as we go deeper into summer, we need to change our times and adjust them later in the afternoon then we'll find a situation where we'll be able to see the night jars again but I've been hearing square tailed fiery necked quite regularly and so I'm pretty sure we can find some night jars I'll try to find one tonight you never know maybe we get lucky and we do find a night jar somewhere this evening hmm where did this leopard go I'm a bit kind of perplexed by it because there's certain tracks that didn't look great and but then there's a smaller track that looks really really good it's on top of all the vehicle tracks and it looks nice and and fresh and clean there's no leaves there's no bits of debris inside the track which is what you would expect from an older track but these seem to not have that and so I'm a bit kind of perplexed as to where this leopard has gone I have to I'll have to stop here and just double check and and look again and really kind of scan around and try and find exact what's that Go away birds calling up ahead VM. So let's try and check. Now the last track I had is here. There it is right there. You can just see it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it VM, but it's right next to me. Maybe if I go back. There it is. Just around that area. So that's the last track that I've got which is pointing towards this bank. Now there are go away birds that are making a noise up in front here so let's go and quickly just check there and double check and make sure. It's going to be interesting to see if maybe something is here lurking. I don't see any trucks turning back this way and coming down towards this area. Of course we could have missed them early and driven over them Right, now I'm going to just quickly look around here because this grey go-away bird is still calling. It's somewhere in these trees and so I believe Brent is also driving around but he's got the added benefit of using some nocturnal technology that helps him to see in the dark which hopefully we'll be able to use a little bit later if we find this leopard. Well, welcome back. Ferg and I are on search for some of the smaller nocturnal animals in the Mara. And what have we got here? That is interesting. Let's have a look. What is that there, Ferg? I can't really see. What have we found? I see. I think it could be banded mongoose. I'm not sure though. No. It's jackal puppies. Oh, I didn't know there was a jackal den here. Hi, little guys. There's four of them in total. Some off to the right slightly, but those two are out in the open, the others are in the long grass. Hello, sweetness. 
Well, uh, wasn't that wonderful? We said we we're going to look for some of the smaller nocturnal critters, and the first one we find is a couple of tiny little jackal pups. Oh, they are so sweet at this age. Here's another one. So there are four that I could see. And the other third one, oh, the fourth one is off in the, in the longer grass. We can't really see it. Oh, are you, are you being very curious? They won't move too far away from that termite mound. That's probably where the den is. And, um, oh, he's chasing bugs. Isn't that cute? You've been very brave. Oh, there's something there. Hi, Paula. Paula's wondering how many puppies are normally in a jackal litter. Um, oh, five in this case. So I've, I've seen four, five, and... We've got one, two, three, four. Let me just have a quick look to the right, Ferg. Is that mom or is that another puppy? That's another pup. No, that's an adult. That is an adult. So one of the adults is here. So we've got four in this 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 litter. Make sure nothing else around. Let's go back. There we go. Oh, very brave. Coming to give us an inspection. So I'd say probably four is is a good average for jackal. Um, sometimes probably a, a bit less, sometimes a bit more. Hello, busy bodies. They won't wander too far from mom, though. Not at this edge. Sweet. What I said, isn't that wonderful? I wonder what other little critters we can find tonight. Maybe some white tailed mongoose, a genet. I'm always, always hopeful for an art fark or an art wolf. <laughs> so they off go the games. There we go, all fall together now. Proud Cat Mama is wondering how long do they stay with their mum? Uh, for probably till they're about just under a year old. Oh, what's that behind them? Oh, those two are off. Into the tumble. There they go, there. Over to the right there, Ferg. There we go. Oh, they're coming back. Oh, it's such a beautiful evening. It's so still. Oh, it looks like Mom's up. Let's go over to the right. Mom or Dad, I'm not sure. Probably going to head off on a good forage now. Oh, disappeared. Oh, yeah, well, let's leave the little ones. Now, uh, Mom has left the den. Oh, an impala snorting. There's some impala snorting just up ahead. What are you snorting at? Let's go have a quick look. Okay, well. They could have been topi snorting. There's the topi. Which way are they looking? They're looking up this way towards the road. Not seeing anything though. Let's just 
listen for a second. See if we get another schnort. There's another sword. Okay, I'm going to check what's happening around here. And there you can just see that eyes in the distance. And while I check, let's go see what Taylor McCurdy is up to. Well, we've just left our lines. They moved off the road a little bit, which made it quite difficult for us to see them, so we'll give them a bit of time. Uh, earlier we were talking about invasive plant species in the Mara, and I was telling you about the Datura stramonium, and I've, I've spoken about this plant so many different times, but I said I would show you it. And so here it is, um, and it's a beautiful, it's got beautiful green leaves, and then those flowers are actually white. I'm gonna, what do you think if we change to color? Hey, Greg, can we, let's change the color quickly so I can show you. I'll put the spotlight on. The plant is a the spotlight. So there's the white flower that I was talking about. It's very easy to identify. And you can see how it's uh, growing in one of these uh, mitre drains. So it doesn't mind the type of soil. It grows in pretty much everything. And then you can even see the seeds pods starting to develop on mm -hmm. this very small one. Uh, they're those sort of spiky green things that you can see just to the right of the main flower. Uh, so they're in there. And those spikes are terrible. It is such a tough seed pod. And it will go, eventually it will go brown in color and burst open. And there's tiny little black seeds. You don't want to eat those. That's what they call it mulpitta, mad seeds. Nobody knows what the dosage is. A lot of uh, African cultures will take those seeds to try and induce themselves in a trance-like state. And they say that they're able then to cross over, over into the other side of the world and speak to the ancestors. But you're either going to have a great trip or you're going to not make it out alive, unfortunately. So it's a tough one. So there it is. It grows everywhere, all over. Okay, let's see what else we can find. Um, I would like to see a chameleon. I'm actually quite jealous. After Tristan got to see a chameleon last night, it um, made me quite envious. And it just reminds me of the time that I saw my first chameleon here in the Mara. And everybody said to me, oh, they're not common. You're never going to see one. I've been here for so long and I haven't seen one yet. And I saw one on my second night here. I didn't take a photo because I thought, ah, oh, if I've seen one now, I'm going to see them all over the show. I still can't believe it. And now that's it. I think I might only see one chameleon in my life here in the Mara. And there's some eyes up ahead. We'll have a look. There is a reed back that lives around here and bounces around quite a bit. I actually saw it again last night. We've seen this, there's a particular reed bug that, uh, buck that we've seen on a regular basis. It's ruined the Ngama's hunt a couple of times as it comes darting out of the bushes and then sends the other animals uh, in a bit of a frenzy. Now I've lost my eyes. Not my eyes, the eyes I was searching for. That would be terrible. I think I'd be panicking if my eyes are gone. There is a reflection that I'm looking for. Just want to get a nice spot and then we'll have a look. You see it over there, Cray? It's a little bit of a mound. I think it is a little bit further up. So it's just, there we go, you can just see it. Yes, what are you? It is a, you a little reed buck. Looks like a reed buck. Like I said, there's a female that hangs around here. It's very, very far away, as you can see, just hiding about. I see it almost every single night. But it's quite cool. A little bit deceiving though, it looks quite small, but it's not, it is, it is quite, yeah, it's a read, so just checking again. Don't want to put the spotlight on it for too long though, just quickly having a look. With those eyes being so far apart, it kind of looks like a hyena and just sitting in the grass. And they fool you quite often. Maybe we'll get to see our owls again, maybe have a better sighting of them uh, than the one we had last night. Obviously it was very quick and they were just flying, but it would not be nice to see them. Now space, shh, hang on, hang on before I even do that. Craig, I think we've got our owl. Right on the top of that tree. I think it's an owl. I'm hoping it's an owl because I don't want to be spotting. It's, is it? No. Sorry, um, that's me. Uh, um, look, where are you? Are you crowned eagle? That's a bit better. I'm going to try and keep the spotlight on. I'm not going to go for too long. It's so, so far away. It's not an owl. Okay, Craig, I'm going to take the spotlight away. I don't know what that is. I can't really see what bird it might be. It looked very crowned. No, it's too light to be a crowned eagle. I'm not sure what that is, but 
it's not a, a bird that can see in the dark so we don't want to uh, harass it for too long sorry so there was a question from space chief and that was what animal do i think in africa eats the most bugs you know what i'm going to say it, it might be something like an aardvark or an odd wolf i mean they can eat hundreds and thousands of ants and termites in one sitting and they'll do that every single night so i think that's going to be my guess or even a bat a bat can eat i don't know how many too many mosquitoes um that's one of the especially the, well, the micro chiroptera the insect eating bats that's their favorite food is actually going after the the insects so it's going to be either a bat or an aardvark or an odd wolf but i don't know the answer unfortunately but perhaps there is a statistic out there how one would get an accurate description uh, of what particular bugs they're feeding on and how many they're eating i have absolutely no idea kudos to someone that's done that maybe you can search uh, of course you, most of you will be watching or perhaps on your computer so you maybe just pop it into the search bar that, ex that exact question and see what pops up and then remember to hashtag safari live and share it with us it'll be quite interesting to see how wrong i was or how right i was probably how wrong i was <laughs> That's okay. I can't do everything. Okay, so I think what we're going to do now is I think we're going to take the forest road. So we're heading towards the bridge, but we won't go across the bridge. We'll go to the right, and then we'll hug the forest all the way back up to the escarpment. That's normally uh, quite a productive road. That's a goodie. Uh, I, I, although, no, I, you know what? I'm not. I told myself the other day that I'll never drive that road in the dark, and... I'm going to make the same mistake again, so I'm just going to stop myself. I'll take this road. This is another one. It's a little bit better. It doesn't quite go all the way to the forest, but it takes us to that little dam that we're often those two hippos are at. We just go through here. Wee! Bumpy. Also, I should probably shine my spotlight around and find things there. Eh? I suppose that's what we have them for. Maybe a scrub here tonight will be on someone's menu. I would, you know what I'd like to see as well, because I always put these sightings of things that I want to have a look at, is seen as though Brent has had jackal pups, I'd like to watch blackback jackals hunt a scrub here. That could be quite cool. Okay, but we're going to keep searching. I'm scanning left and right, hoping to find some owls and maybe an aardvark or an aardvolf. Who knows? We'll be that lucky this evening. Tristan has been tracking a leopard. Let's go see if he's any closer to finding it. Well, unfortunately, no luck yet. We're still looking around, but it's also a bit of a problem now is the lack of light that we have. So walking is quite tough. But there is just the most magnificent sunset that we're experiencing at the moment. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So you've got this big kind of diagonal cloud, some of the dead trees, and this orange glow in the sky. It's a wonderful sunset that we've got this evening. And so even if we don't find a leopard anywhere near here, it's still very pretty. But I'm completely confused by these tracks because the tracks that we had on Central, a lot of them were very fresh. They were shiny, they were clean, they looked really good. And then we came down into the Mulawati and there was more tracks in the Mulawati but they seem to really kind of be a little older and they're not quite the same. So I don't know if there's a different leopard that's walking around here. Maybe the first tracks are Tinganas and then now a young male but the tracks in there are not for a big male leopard. They're not Tingana size even in the Mulawati. That's, so that's why I'm a little confused as to which male leopard is walking around here and I'm just checking all the little likely spots that I know Tumba has hung around before and just kind of scouting and seeing if maybe he's not lying somewhere here and you know we kind of just missed him but he's somewhere still in this general vicinity so that's just what we're doing at the moment. It's all a bit thick and a bit bouncy at this stage Danjak, you're asking what is the longest string of days that I've found a leopard? Mm, I mean, outside of Safari Live, I'm honestly not sure. I've never even really counted it, so I wouldn't know. Um, Safari Live would have been last time when we, well, I suppose we didn't have that long a streak. Can you hear all those Franklins, Vim? So, last kind of month we had a, an incredible leopard month but I can't remember exactly how many it was in a row. It didn't seem like it was that many although we had a kind of 
lines that helped us out on our cat streak but we did see a lot of leopard in one month i think last month was probably the most leopards i've seen in a single month and it was just crazy last month we just kind of kept seeing leopard all over the place which is quite strange so i suppose last month would have been a really good kind of estimate as to the most leopards i've seen in a month Although I don't know, I mean it's difficult to say because I've seen a lot at a lot of these places but when you're guiding you don't really count them, you don't, it's not like here where we kind of have people that help us out with thinking about these things and counting them and keeping track. When you're a guide you tend to be so busy with other stuff that you really kind of forget about some of the sightings you have and they all kind of melt into one another. So a little bit difficult as a guide to remember what my best streak is but I would say probably anywhere between sort of 15 and 20 days would be about right for the most number of days consecutively with the leopard. Be interesting to know the most consecutive drives because obviously you miss one every now and then on drives. I would love to know what our most consecutive drives for leopard has been here at Safari Live. I mean, so every, that means basically every single drive, so not just one a day, but how many we've had every single drive. It'll be interesting to see. Right, so nothing where I thought maybe Tumba might be lying up this side. Now I'm going to go and just check down the Mulawati towards Twin Dams again in case. Also might, actually while I'm here, I might just check on the other side here is Nyala Road South. There's a few little mud wallows. So it might be worth just quickly having a little look there and just checking. There was a few Franklins that made a bit of a noise. I'd imagine it's these guys here in front that were shouting just now it seems as though something was making a bit of a noise so i think it's probably these guys their last call these all natal franklins that we see there and quite a big grouping of them it's a lot more than i would have thought we would have seen together but they might have been making their last squawks for the night and making a bit of a noise before they settle down Right, while we start to get our lights out and start to use spotlights, Taylor has already been doing that for quite some time and she's been looking for some of the nocturnal creatures and I believe she's found one. I'll drive up and catch it. Sorry everyone, I was just having a conversation with Craig about our plans. We've got a blackback jackal and this is exactly what we were talking about. I was thinking that maybe we should head around on the road and actually try and catch up to it. It's not particularly skittish, I'm a little bit nervous as it should be. Uh, but it's fairly relaxed, so let's uh, let's go up and see if we can get a better view of it. We were just talking about how I would like to see a jackal catching a scrubber, and Craig would also be excited by that. He was just saying how he is enjoying the jackal sightings lately. We don't have such good, high-quality jackal sightings in the Sabi Sand. Well, well, not up in the north. I can't really think of a sighting that's really stood out to me. I mean, we used to have some nice ones on the Arethusa airstrip. Where there's our very sad mangy friend that lives at Chitra. I wonder if it's still alive. And who else? I've had some cool sightings in the Eastern Cape of blackback jackal, though. Really nice ones, lots of dens and that type of thing. Oh, I'm sure. Where'd you go? Are you at the tree? I think it's at the tree now. We'll have a look. Please don't run away from us, jackal. We just want to watch you. We want to watch and learn about jackals being jackals. Okay, it's just stopped and looking at us now on a patrol looking for something looking for something to eat at the moment now Christine you're wondering what are the differences between a blackback and a side stripe jackal well a uh, blackback jackal firstly is slightly smaller in size a side stripe is much larger uh, the side stripe is also a lot more stockier and it's got it seems to have a bigger head uh, and, and more of a fluffier coat uh, whether it's just because it's more heavy set, I'm not so sure. So, in my opinion, the blackback jackals are slightly more slight and slender. And then, of course, you can see that black stripe now going uh, along the the side of the body, and then the dark back, almost like a German shepherd with a very, very dark tail. Uh, it's a, it's not like that with a side stripe jackal. No, a side stripe jackal, you'll see, is a lot a lot lighter in colour. This is so cool. Um, they eat the same thing, their diet's no different. I wonder what it's going to be looking for tonight. Let me actually give you a bit of extra light there. It's a bit far away. Uh, it could go for anything. I mean, they also eat insects and bugs, so maybe they're going to be a contender for who eats the most bugs in Africa. Craig, what's on the right-hand side? I just saw some... What's that? Oh, my gosh, there's the scrub hair. There is the scrub hair and the jackal. Please go for it. It's running towards it. I'm not sure what it's going to do. Are you going to chase after it? It looks like it wants to. No ways. Go, 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 Jackal. 
Sorry, scrub hair. I'm cheering the jackal on. I can't believe that I... That's what it is. It's just chasing it. I can't see it. It's going after it. Nah, it's giving up. No. <laughs> that is honestly unbelievable. I cannot believe that I asked the world. I put those vibes out there and said, I would like to see a scrub hair being eaten by a jackal. Didn't quite get to see that happen. That's okay, though. How amazing just to see the chase. Wow. Okay, we've gone, they've gone quite far away. Let's go up. Maybe it's going to tail after that scrub hair. That scrub hair is very quick, though. Um, but use the different technique. It was obviously out in the road. It was completely exposed. It knew it couldn't try and stalk it. So just sort of trotted on towards it and then raced for it they will try and stalk as well they'll they'll sneak through the long grass and then often they'll pounce up and then land down on their prey much like what a leopard would do if it was hunting in the in the long grass okay well i'll see our, our jackal friend so i'm gonna try and catch up to it and maybe we get another view that was really amazing i hope you enjoyed that just as much as craig and i did brent however has got a rather large mammal that is done swimming for the day and is feeling a little bit hungry well it is it's a, a big bull hippo but not one of the dominant bulls he's just come out of the little lugger and now striding off into the darkness to go and get some food now of course we are in infrared and he's getting to the edge of our infrared lights he's gone bye hippo well it seems like it's the jackal's night out so we we got to see all the little 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 pups and our tailors just had one hunting i am hoping we can find another nocturnal creature like a janet or or white-tailed mongoose water mongoose But it has been a lovely, lovely evening. Lots of lions about. Unfortunately, not too many birds as the wind was blowing quite strongly for the beginning of drive. Who knows, maybe we'll get lucky with an owl on the way home. There's actually a favorite spot for the Verreau's Eagle Owl to sit just up ahead here. Where's on this, where's that dead tree gone? He's sitting around here somewhere, but Ah, oh, there, that dead tree. No, no owl today. Hi, a Project Alpha. Project Alpha is wondering, have uh, on the other side of the river, uh, lots around the Musiara Marsh, um, and also uh, actually around Balloon Crossing. There's uh, a lot of spring hares around on that side. Um, not so many. I've only seen them down near the Tanzanian border, uh, uh, in the Triangle. Sorry. Don't know. I, I'm, I'm supposed to apologize. I'm not sure what I'm apologizing for. I just said apologize. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I'm also sorry. Ferg, sorry. Ferg, uh, there we go. Thank you, Chantal. We had a bit of black screen, so apologies for that, but we are live from the African bush. Fergus and I will um, take turns beating each other with a whip. Um, we are so sorry about it. Now, quite often just up ahead here, there's a tree that I see a genet in. So hopefully that genet might be around this evening. I've seen him hunting birds in that tree a few times. Oh, but it seems like Taylor McCurdy has got another nocturnal creature. We do. You have to look very carefully in between the grass. You can just sort of see its eyes reflecting back at us. It's not our jackal anymore. It is a white-tailed mongoose, the larger species of mongoose that we get. And also the one that likes to roam around at night, so it is on the prowl at the moment. I don't think a jackal would go for something like this. Craig actually asked me. I think that a mong white-tailed mongoose is quite a feisty creature, and I'm sure it might uh, have a go at the jackal as well. Maybe a little one, but an adult? Nah, I don't think so. So I saw something interesting, and I, I think I told you about this quite some time ago. Uh, it was here in the Mara because I've seen the most bizarre thing. Well, 
I suppose they're not bizarre because we know animals just do what they want. Uh, but I saw a white-tailed mongoose eating on a wildebeest carcass. How cool is that? I never thought that they would scavenge, but apparently they do scavenge to an extent. Uh, they'll eat little grubs. They will eat birds, mongoose, oh, chicken killers. That's what mongoose are. Uh, it was always my biggest fear growing up as a kid that I was going to have my chickens eaten by mongoose, and I did, which was very, very sad, unfortunately. Um, not nice. It's not a very nice thing at all. But uh, they'll go, they'll eat the eggs, they eat lots and lots of different types of birds and things. They've just gone out of too far out of reach, I'm afraid. But a nice uh, nocturnal critter to see. Uh, I think I had some of my best sightings initially seeing white-tailed mongoose was actually at, uh, at Juma on quarantine when Jamie and I did that, the, the Mara week when James first came up to the, the Mara. That was last year sometime and it was amazing. We had such great sightings. We had quite a few of them at Green Interaction. And there's a couple around here. There's, hopefully we'll see a couple more. But there's one particular and it's quite big. I'm wondering if it's a, maybe a male. He's not scared at all of the vehicles. He walks right sort of past us. I've had him a couple of times after the show has ended. So that's where I'm heading now is to some of these favorite spots. They climb up and down on the termite mounds. So I think maybe they're looking for mounds, especially at this time of the, the year with all the rain that we've had that are releasing alates because we know a lot, oh, so many creatures will eat alates. Even hyenas will lap them up. Uh, and then also solifuges and things hang around on termite mounds and that would be a delicious meal or something like a mongoose. Although I haven't seen a few if you'd find them or if maybe it's but I don't know. I also don't have an insect book. Oh well a Kenyan insect book. I don't have any of my books with me. I've got mammals, a couple of mammals books, some bird books, and that's pretty much it. And with a serious uh, baggage a sort of allowance that well, we could have and well there were other things that I wanted to bring I wish I could have brought my entire library but maybe when I go home on my holiday I'll grab some more books and then bring them back up here so yeah you're all stuck with me in Kenya for quite some time which is very exciting hello buffalo and some buffalo they're fast asleep but we won't bother them we had some nice sightings of buffalo today which is quite cool okay where's the next animal who's it gonna be Oh, and our, uh, our jackal disappeared as well, also over the hill. So I lost it. And the scrub here made it out safely, though. Hmm. It's around here normally. Okay, well, we're going to keep checking around uh, this area uh, the white-tailed mongoose hangs around that I was just telling you about. Uh, Tristan has got his flashlight out. He's shining left and right. Will there be a last-minute cat in South Africa? Well, I'm not sure there will be. We're just busy checking Mulawati and seeing if there's any sign of anything, but I'm not 100% sure. Vim says he saw a leopard track somewhere here, so we're just having a... I see it. There we go. There we go. So there's the leopard track that VM's talking about. It's coming down and growing out of our area. So I wonder if this is the same leopard we've been tracking this afternoon. But it's definitely coming out of Juma and heading into Little Gari, which is not ideal. There goes those tracks and deeper into Little Gari. I can't see anything with the spotlight, so we must have missed out, unfortunately. So the tracks that we're following must be the same tracks that we see. Sometimes things go south, sometimes things go north. Complain too much. We've had a wonderful day anyway, so it's not like we can complain. And there's just the most ridiculous sky. Look at how orange that is. And the good thing is, is if we go along the rhyme, red sky at night, sailors delight. There we go. There's the red sky for the night and the road leading into that red sky. Absolutely wonderful and a bit bumpy. Sorry, VM. That's because of the corrugations on Gauri Main. But how's that? quite a color isn't it just now it was amazing we had about five minutes where that orange color was all the way around even on the east north west of us it was absolutely wonderful and i was saying that we were going to get a wonderful sunset if the clouds just separated slightly and allowed the sun to shine through and well we managed to deliver on that so i think it was quite beautiful what do you think vm i think it matches it matches best one this month and it matches your cake-like perfume 
that you're having. Yes, it's all about. You're gonna lend it to me. Well, thank you, Vim. That's very kind of you. So I'm gonna smell like a cake tomorrow as well. Wonderful. I think everybody. I was telling Vim that when I was a kid, my mother had bought um, a spray that for the kitchen, like a, a what do you call it? An air freshener for the kitchen, if you wanted to call that. But it was quite a fancy one, and it smelled like baked cakes. It was the worst thing in the world because she used to spray it around the kitchen, and then I would come home from school or from you know from playing sports on the weekends and the kitchen smelt like a freshly baked cake and there was nothing it was like tormenting a child <laughs> that was it was horrible but it did smell really good i must be honest it was like it still ranks as the best smelling air freshener that i've ever smelt it didn't smell chemically like air fresheners can smell it smelt perfectly like a baked cake it was amazing and chocolate baked cake actually to say well to be completely accurate so you can see VM just scanning around twin dams there's not really much happening there so we're trying to throw roll the dice as VM says and we're trying to just try and sneak a, a last minute leopard somewhere in this area but things seem to be going against us tracks are going the wrong way it's getting dark <sighs> VM come out at any point now yes okay so Liam's confident Tingan is going to be our last minute leopard tonight. Uh, seems to be his his modus operandi is he likes to be the last minute leopard to kind of come out just as the drive is finishing and just so that we don't get to see him for too long. And maybe it's the lights. Maybe he's not a fan of the lights. In the mornings he tends to be more obliging if we catch up with him. Hmm. Well at least we got Ellie's today, VM. That was nice. It's good to see the elephants. Might not have seen much else, but we'll take the elephants and a couple of birds here and there. It's been a nice drive. I've enjoyed myself. Also good to see the sunshine. It's been always very pleasant to see the sunshine. VM and I were just saying that the clouds are those kind of clouds we're about to suffer again from heat. This coolish evening before we get a horrible sort of hot front that comes through again. Now I believe my signal is playing up again. The gremlins are attacking on twin dams as they like to do. And so from one man using his spotlight, let's go across all the way to the Mara to another that's also using his spotlight. Well, what a wonderful evening it's been. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't found any more little nocturnal critters, but Taylor's done it for us. But uh, we look forward to seeing you all again bright and early tomorrow morning and who knows what wonders the day will bring now of course the night brings many wonders as well now i was just thinking about tristan uh, being traumatized by his mother's um air freshener but it seems like vm has decided the best way to torture tristan is to bathe in vanilla and so tristan has to drive around all day smelling vanilla vm Vanilla VM, that's quite a scary thought, actually. <laughs> uh, but, um, and what was that, Ferg? A VW, Vanilla VM, VW. Yes, but, uh, and uh, what a great day at Juma. I got to see that, those four cheetah on Juma. That's incredible. That's the most cheetah I've ever heard of on Juma. The most I've ever seen is two uh, on Juma. And I've only ever seen one female. And I wonder if that female is now the mother of those three cubs. I saw her once while tracking on foot and we couldn't find her in the car again. Now, uh, we have a special treat in camp tonight and uh, it is pizza night, so I'm quite delighted to see what the, uh, the, the lovely chefs and Elka and Rebecca and, what, and all the others back in camp have managed to come up. I'm expecting my slice to be ready as I arrive. What about you, Ferg? Mm, I'm trying to think what pizza I want. I'm salivating at the thought of the pizza, and I'm sure I know someone else who is also salivating at the thought of pizza, and that's the hurdy-burdy, but not so sturdy, McCurdy. I'm so sturdy, Brent. What are you talking about? You talk absolute hogwash. <laughs> You're like a, a big brother that picks on me all the time. But like, we quite enjoy it. We all tease each other uh, all the time. Uh, yes. Uh, do you know what I actually got, though, when Megan gave me the update? I got, it was comms breakup, and then I heard something about the vanilla perfume that VM wears. So <laughs> and, 
and then Craig said I wouldn't be surprised. So that's what we took from that conversation and what Tristan was talking about, which was uh, actually quite funny. But yes, my mom has uh, the knack for burning incense, so that's what, what our house smelt like all the time. I like to burn elephant dung. My my mom, uh, my mom likes to burn incense. Oh, okay, so it wasn't VM wearing vanilla scented perfume. V- <laughs> VM has a new soap. It's good, you know, practicing hygiene as one should. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so apparently that smells like vanilla so, and my younger brother Sean oh my goodness he can't walk past a perfume shop or a a shop with soaps and things like that and body lotions he absolutely loves smelling it and I'll never forget as a young boy and he still does it at t- almost 22 he still does he goes and he smells everything so that's my brother's absolute favorite is that if you're going to buy him something it must smell nice he's funny like that and, well, speaking of things that smell nice, those waterbuck we were looking at didn't. They don't smell nice at all. I'm just getting a, a whiff of them. Actually, there they are again. It's quite a bit of you. Car, please don't roll. I can see Brent's lights now. And so, so there they sit, getting ready for the evening. Unfortunately, we disturbed them just a little bit, just to the, that they were sitting down and then they decided to stand back up again. But once we go home and head up the escarpment road, all will be settled in the night and and so will the water bucket. they'll settle back down and they will go to sleep well as well as much sleep as you can get in an area where there are plenty plenty lions well this, no it is dust craig and i were wondering earlier if those were bugs or dust but i think it's just the dust that we're kicking up Right, it has been another fantastic afternoon out in the Mara, and it seems as though South Africa in the Sabi Sand has been great too, and I hope that you've all enjoyed it. Remember to join us tomorrow morning for the Sunrise Safari. We'll see you then.